Good everyone, welcome to this video. Today we are going to be doing a strike aircraft advice video for War Thunder. This will feature tips and advice for three different classifications of strike aircraft. Those three being dedicated strike aircraft, multi-role strike aircraft, and heavy weapons guys. Before we begin, there are timestamps in the description below with the sections listed accordingly. Additionally, if you are not sure what category your intended aircraft is in, feel free to ask in the comments below or ask in the Discord server, which will also be linked below. Feel free to select one of those that you are looking for. One last thing before we begin. I would appreciate if you shared this video, as this will greatly help others who may be struggling to fly these types of aircraft. Let's begin by starting off with the dedicated strike aircraft. These aircraft are typically designed with ground attack in mind. As a result, these aircraft tend to be heavily armoured, slow and cumbersome. Nearly all of these dedicated strike aircraft feature tail guns for protection. These tail guns tend to be heavy caliber weapons to ensure you can at least engage and possibly take out your attacker before you are destroyed yourself. Typical examples of dedicated strike aircraft include the PBJ-1J, which I'm using to demonstrate this part of the video, A26s, Mosquitoes and PE3s. So as previously mentioned, for today's example, I'll be showcasing the PBJ-1J. I'll be giving you general tips that will apply to nearly all of the available dedicated strike aircraft in the game. So, let's take a look at how I tend to play dedicated strike aircraft. So starting us off, you'll immediately notice that I'm turning away to the side of the battlefield and not just rushing in. Rushing in is a guaranteed way to get yourself killed, and this isn't ideal as you can imagine. I also dive as low as I can without hitting the trees to ensure the likely chance of me being spotted is reduced. As I'm approaching the left hand base on this map, you'll notice that I'm keeping a watchful eye on my surroundings. This is because fighters are a big threat to something like a PBJ, so I'd rather not take my chances. Once the area is clear, I move in to drop my bombs on the far left base. Some dedicated strike aircraft can destroy a base, some can't. It depends on the map too, so bear that in mind. On this map however, and given this is a down tier game, I only need three bombs to destroy this base, leaving me one available should I need it later. After dropping my bombs, I immediately turn away. Destroying a base does bleed tickets, but it also alerts watchful enemy fighters. After checking my surroundings, I begin slowly making my way towards a pillbox. And after ensuring I'm safe from enemy fighters, I begin to turn to head in for a gun pass on said pillbox, whilst keeping an eye on me as I go along. This is important because if I'm attacked by an enemy aircraft, this would be detrimental to my survival because I would not be able to react in time. After one last check, I begin firing whilst noticing the bow fighters turn. I successfully destroyed the pillbox, but I was watching the bow fighter who starts heading towards me. I turn away from it due to its heavy armament and begin to jump on the gunners. Whilst I'm in gunner view, I do look around to make sure I'm okay, then switch back to the normal view and check around using the C key. Using gunner view can be very important, so do make sure to use it if your aircraft has it. If not, make sure to use that C key. After extending away from the battlefield and watching around me to make sure the bow fire has disappeared, I can now safely turn back into the battlefield and begin working over the enemy ground forces once again. But I always keep an eye on my surroundings to ensure my aircraft's safety. It is also important to know what your weapons can and cannot destroy. I will demonstrate this meaning later on. I now move in to engage even more pillboxes. There are several to do, but also I have to keep an eye on my situational awareness as I said earlier. This is important to do as you can be easily tunnel visioned on ground targets and you can lose track of enemy aircraft. After destroying that first pillbox, I look around again and begin turning for the next pillbox. After destroying that pillbox, I do the same thing, because I'm well aware that there is a Focke Wolf 190 in the area. Once again, after destroying the next pillbox, I do the exact same thing, but I take a more thorough look. As I have fighters to my right, I don't need to be too concerned as they are friendly fighters, but I continue watching the Focke Wolf just in case.
and after finally destroying the last pillbox in this row, I begin turning to the far right base. This is because I have one bomb remaining and I might as well help my teammate out in the NC223 who is about to drop on this base as well. However, doing this, if you haven't seen them call a base, may put you in the sight of base stealing. Base stealing is frowned upon, but some people appreciate the teamwork. And at the end of the day, there's more bases on the map which everyone can go for. So just make sure to not steal anyway. If someone calls it, go for another one. After dropping my bomb, that's only a third of the base, but my teammate in the NC223 is going to be able to finish that base off, and he's also going to be able to kill the other base. And as you're about to see demonstrated, my PBJ's 50 caliber guns are not enough to destroy these tanks. The game designates these as heavy tanks, but of course we all know those are Panthers, so they're not heavy tanks. It's just how Gaijin have put them into the game. I'll cover this in more detail, however, on how to destroy ground targets and what's best used to destroy them. This is because I see quite a few players making these errors, and I think it would be a good idea to help those people out. I now begin moving towards the last few pillboxes, whilst also maintaining situational awareness. Just because the enemy, the enemy team is low on enemy aircraft doesn't mean that I have to let my situational awareness go down. If I do so, I could easily be bounced by the Whirlwind or the Fokker 190 that I've mentioned a few times now. After destroying these pillboxes, there is no, there is no more ground targets left that I can comfortably destroy to bleed tickets, so I decide to head back to my airfield in which by the time I get back to my airfield, the match ends with us being victorious. That's the end of this section. I hope you've now realised the importance of situational awareness, knowing that heavy MGs can destroy light pillboxes, having a bomb load on your plane can make the difference in helping your team get that little bit more of an advantage, and situational awareness keeping us alive there. We will now move on to the next section of the video, that being multi-role strike aircraft. This section will cover multi-role strike aircraft. These are typically faster than your dedicated strike aircraft and tend to play more of a support role, with them being able to do most tasks available to a player in the game. For today's example, however, I'm using the BF-110 G2. In this gameplay, I use the BF-110 G2 to engage bases, ground targets, enemy aircraft, etc. This is because this aircraft is capable of doing most tasks you put in front of it, and can even surprise some of the players that engage it in what it can actually do. There are several other aircraft that can do what I'm presenting today as well, such as ME410s, IL-2s, IL-10s, Fireflies, AD-2 and AD-4 Sky Raiders. This doesn't cover all aircraft that fit into this category, but this is the general ones that tend to do this type of playstyle the best. So, instead of sitting around, let's go into the battle and let's take a look at how I tend to play multi-role strike aircraft. As I previously mentioned, these types of aircraft can be used in a multitude of roles, hence why I refer to them as multi-role. They don't typically excel in these multiple roles, but they are capable of doing these roles to some extent. I start off by heading to the far left base. My bomb load is not enough to destroy the base, but should a teammate come along to finish it off, it means he or she doesn't have to use as much payload, and may just help them along in their grind. This is also referred to as teamwork, which, as we all know, is a relatively rare sight in War Thunder. As we began our dive, you might have noticed that th I'm not deploying any air brakes. This is because not all multi-role strike aircraft have access to these. So, make sure to watch your compression if you have a heavy bomb load, like I do here. As you may have noticed, throughout my bomb dropping and as I approached, I was keeping a watchful eye out around me, especially in case that P-38 decided to come to me. This is because I don't want to be bounced by a enemy fighter whilst I'm dropping bombs, as my aircraft will be much heavier, and whilst we could get a jingle bomb, it's unlikely that we will get the kill, so it's important to keep a situational awareness high anyway. After getting my bombs off the plane, I move in to engage the P-38. I'm continuing to keep an eye out around me. Just because I'm in a more nimble aircraft than something like a dedicated strike aircraft, that doesn't mean I can embrace my inner Spitfire and outturn everything. Situational awareness is very key. 
I engage an AA gun as I'm going through. Targets of opportunity are nothing to sneeze at. They're extra points, and most importantly, on this map, they bleed a little bit of tickets. I then begin to pitch my nose up for the P-38. It's an important, well it's very important to keep an eye on the airspeed indicator whilst pitching your aircraft up, as you bleed more speed than a typical fighter would. I have some crap aim, we, as a result of me forgetting to unload stealth belts, we blow the P-38 to pieces, and continue on our merry way. As stated earlier, I'm continuing to watch around above me. I don't want anyone diving on me whilst I'm busy engaging. I now begin to turn back towards enemy ground targets whilst keeping a watchful eye out. Not all strike aircraft are created equal, so pillboxes and tanks can be simple for some, but hard for others. However, howitzers are more than capable of being destroyed by a BF-110, so those are the targets that I select for the moment. We begin making our way towards the pillbox and the medium tanks that are available on this map. The BF-110 can kill medium tanks, if I could aim, but pillboxes, not so much. After failing to destroy the pillbox, we're about to take a head on with the P-39 just in front of us. As we're going through, we engage the anti-aircraft gun for a bit of extra points, and we take the the head-on with the P-39 player. Who learns the hard way that I have the better guns for our second kill of the match. I then pitch up to get my rear turret in position for firing on the bot BF-110 above me. Because yes, for some reason, Gaijin decides to put in bots that the German aircraft can face and their German aircraft. I don't know why either. However, as you saw there, my shots are rather ineffective. At this moment, the F4U makes his way towards me and smartly dips below my guns, making it a bit awkward to get a shot. However, because I've got team support, I turn around to continue the engagement and attempt to fire a shot on him. But as I'm not accustomed to stealth on this plane, my shots miss. In a moment, however, I'm soon noticing a P-51 that's about to dive in on us. And there he is. So I break off to engage him instead, but fire one last burst to see if I can get a, a cheeky 20mm hit, but I fail so. However, this P-51 pilot isn't, well he was going to make the fatal mistake, but he pulls out at the last second. Smart decision on his part. Unfortunately for him, his buddy in the P-51 who's coming towards us is not so smart. I have just enough airspeed to get my guns on target, and he makes the mistake of taking the head on. We disintegrate him, and that's the end of him. With the last two enemy players being just in front, I have no real reason to be situational aware now. So whilst we're going through, we farm another howitzer and bring my 20mm guns to bear on the Corsair who learns the hard way that he should have gone for me instead. We now begin to turn towards the P-51C-10. What he should have done is extend, but sadly this player makes the fatal mistake of turning in. Had he continued to do so, we would probably never have caught him and he could have easily turned the tide. But because we're in the slower aircraft, in the rolling scissors, we're easily able to score a crit. He tries to keep his aircraft in the game, and once again, thanks to my crap aim, we are not able to put this aircraft down just yet, but he crashes into the ground, we nearly do our so ourselves, we fly through the smoke like it's Hollywood, appearing unharmed. That's the end of this section, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you've learned the versatility of multi-role aircraft, and hopefully not run stealth in your weaponry, if you're not in touch with it just yet. Now we'll move on to the last section which is heavy weapons guys. This last section is about heavy weapons guys. Team Fortress 2 references aside, I typically refer to these as heavy weapon aircraft, but is a rather appropriate description of these strike aircraft. These aircraft carry bigger than average guns, ranging from 37mm all the way up to 102mm. 
Aircraft that fit this description include the IL-237, which we're using for this example today, the HS-129B3, the ME-410A1U4, the Mosquito Mark 18, the FC-20 Biz, the Kai 109 and the P-108A Series 2. These aircraft carry bigger weapons than normal aircraft do, and as a result, tend to be cumbersome in their handling. As a result, careful gameplay must be employed to boost the survivability of these aircraft. These aircraft typically are heavier than multi-role aircraft, and as such, are not very agile, and can't really take on enemy aircraft unless they take head-ons. However, you must have guns that have a high cyclic rate, which in other words means how fast your guns can fire in a given moment. Some heavy weapons aircraft do feature tail gunners, but these are not common, and the ones that do tend to lack firepower, but not this IL-2. Typically, these aircraft trade machine guns and smaller cannons for heavier guns. In this IL-2's case, it trades rocket carrying capacity, bomb load, and trades quite a bit of flight performance too. Some of these heavy weapon carriers even carry some light bombs, but it is not advised to take these unless absolutely needed. This is because the aircraft carrying these weapons tend to struggle, and adding extra weight is not ideal. So with that in mind, let's go take a look and see how I play heavy weapons aircraft. So starting us off, we don't really need to climb, as I want to stick near my fellow strike aircraft. This is because heavy weapons aircraft struggle alone, and as a result, a pack formation is best advised. We start by looking around to see what's around our area keeping an eye on our surroundings. Just because we have heavy guns doesn't mean that we're a light aircraft. Typically, you want to be aware of enemies at all times. This is because if you do not maintain situational awareness, you will suffer in the long run. A P-38 player has just come in front of us and taken out a fellow player. He loses a part of his wing, but we're going to take the opportunity to take him out. He is still able to fly his aircraft, so I don't think this is a kill steal. If you think so, put it in the comments below. But as far as I'm concerned, this P-38 player easily could have gotten his aircraft back to base. And as this poor player is about to learn, you don't really want to go straight in with an attack on aircraft. And after that explosion, I think even the Wright brothers would struggle to make something out of that wreckage. Now the immediate threat has been dealt with, we continue to keep an eye out around us. And as we do so, this P-40 begins to turn towards us. I was keeping an eye on him anyway, but he turns for the head-on. Due to our high cyclic rate, we are easily able to take this guy in the head-on. And for his troubles, he catches a 37mm straight to his engine block. We turn back in to see if the fire sticks, and sure enough, it's going to. I don't think his engine is one that you can fix with a simple service at your local garage though. Same with his airframe. We now begin to turn in with our big guns. We do not have AP loaded this game, I have high explosive loaded. So I am unable to kill pillboxes with the 37mm. Typically though, the 37s can kill enemy aircraft if needed with the AP rounds. However, they can be a bit unreliable. But now we can begin engaging ground targets. Our 37mm can destroy tanks with the HE rounds, but we're rudely interrupted by this A36, who thinks having 10 50 caliber guns wins any argument. Unfortunately for him, not this one. Our teammate deals with the Corsair in front of us, and we can continue on our merry way. We've skipped ahead a little bit now, as it mostly was ground panning, which I don't think I need to point out how to do. However, avoiding the buildings on this map is a good idea to do. We're about to use our small bomb load to help our SM-79 friend out, who bombed this base. This not only helps him, but I was working on a daily task at the time, which this match finished, because I just needed one more base kill. We do keep two bombs in the plane just in case, but these end up not being used. We can now go back to engaging ground targets to ensure that we get enough tickets to win the match. We're a little bit behind the enemy team as you can see, so we need to work with our team to make sure that doesn't happen. When using heavy armed aircraft, you don't want 
to be engaging just the light stuff if you can. However, I've unfortunately limited myself as I was prepared to deal with enemy aircraft, not with enemy ground targets because I was intending to get a different map. As you can see though, the 7.62s can do some damage. However, for some reason, no other nation's ground, well, 7.62s I should say, are able to do this. But the 37mm are more than capable, unless you hit the side skirts. Had I been firing AP, I would have been able to destroy those. This is where I'm about to make my mistake of situational awareness. As you've noticed, I've not been keeping an eye out very much. And this is something you should not do, especially in something like this. And as you will see, it nearly gets me killed as I'm slow and vulnerable. Addition with flaps down, I'm further decreasing speed as I want to bring my guns onto target onto this bot. Once we do get the guns on target, and blow the bot to pieces, I pull up for a second and take a massive hit from a sneaky FW-190. I pitch down and get on the tail gun, fire a short burst but the gunner is unable to get his gun on target, he mistakenly breaks off and enables me to bring the nose around, I'm able to bring the guns to bear, and blow his airframe to completely pieces. This was rather lucky, had he continued his attack, I'd have likely been shot down. That was on his mistake, not on mine, but we can capitalize on mistakes even with the damage. And that is the end of the heavy weapons aircraft section. I hope you enjoyed seeing why situational awareness is key, forcing an option or forcing a head on is an option in these types of planes, however not all are ideal for this and sticking near your team can really benefit you. That's the end of the video, if you enjoyed this video please do let me know in the comments below. If you have any suggestions on advice videos, also do the same in the comments below. This video was completed thanks to a script. Th special thanks to my friends Zena, Jessica and Rainey for overlooking this script and making sure it was not filled with spelling mistakes. Additionally, if there was any stuttering throughout this video, because I do tend to stutter sometimes, I can only apologise for that. Thank you all for watching today's video on Strike Aircraft Advice, and I will see you all on the next one.